Hello friends, I am back again. So let's continue with our discussion. Normally, psychologists say that uh, a student can focus maximum 20 to 25 minutes. That's why I stopped the video because I want to keep the videos like under 20 minutes so that you have full focus. So I thought I'll put two 20 minutes video rather than a long video of 40, 50 minutes. Now, once more I'll repeat. We had been talking about population and sample. Right now, I want you to believe that whatever data I have provided here that you see in the screen is sample. Because I created the data, I know whether it is from a population or a sample and I am telling you it is a sample. In examination, you don't have to worry. You just read the question you read just read the question properly it will be clearly mentioned sample or population or by reading that question you will be able to understand whether it is a sample or population now this is very important please note it down if you are dealing with population you must follow these notations if you are dealing with a sample you must follow these notations and in your calculator, they have only X bar. So whether you plug in a population or whether you plug in a sample, your calculator will not know. Your calculator will not identify whether it is a sample or a population. It will simply show X bar is equal to. So you have to use your discretion and decide whether to keep mu or x bar. But when it comes to standard deviation, your calculator, I think you already saw two things. Uh, by the way, you can use this down button. Can you see the button here? The down, down, down button. And if you use that button, you will come across two characters, sx and sigma x. In very old calculators, they use x sigma n minus 1. I had that calculator. Right now, I don't have. And you, if you are using that old calculator, please comment below so that I can include, uh, like what you call, things from that calculator also in the coming videos. And x sigma n for population. So note it down. This is population and this is for sample. And in examination, you have to be very, 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 very careful. Whenever they ask you to calculate sample standard deviation, you have to find and you have to write this value. And whenever you want population standard deviation, you have to write this value. Once more, I'll repeat. When we go through the question paper, you'll understand how important these notations are. In examination, they ask both. So once more, one last time, mu stands for population, x bar stands for sample average, the arithmetic mean. But in your calculator, they are giving you only this because both will give you the same answer. But in your calculator, you have sx and sigma x, sx represents sample standard deviation sigma x represents population standard deviation now you have to be aware of one very important thing sometimes they will ask use formula method in case they ask you use formula method you have to go for one two three four and can you see the formula for mu and x bar are almost the same only the notations are different okay now let's go back to the second question okay so take your calculator let it be the new one or the old one and this is clearly type 2 and how many variables are there only one variable because we are talking only about mark the data goes like 20, 20, 20, 25, 25, 25, 25, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30
okay so you take your calculator put it into stat mode and will you turn on the frequency yes turn on how do you turn it on I think you already know that you can look at the previous video okay now choose one variable I will plug in are you able to see X and frequency here you plug in all the X values then the frequency then turn on then press the option button OPTN or according to your calculator in the old calculators is completely different the steps are here because in the old calculators is like shift one data input etc etc anyway according to your calculator okay so tell me how much did you get you can type the values in the comment x bar and sx by the way why did I not choose Sigma X because in the beginning of the video I told you very clearly this is a sample I'm telling you I made the question so I have to inform my students or I have to inform that part in the question paper this is a sample unless and until you are doing a real life experiment by yourself you will not know whether it is a sample or a population unless otherwise mentioned okay now let's go for the third one the third one is very important because it is called continuous data and these things cannot be plugged into a calculator directly so what you do is instead of writing 20 to 25 you'll go for the mid value what will you take you'll go for the mid value I'll tell you why here in type 2 in type 2 if I ask you how many students scored mark 20 how many students scored the mark 20 you'll tell me three students how many students scored the mark 25 you will tell me four students now here can you tell me how many students scored a mark between 20 and 25 of course seven students can you tell me exactly the mark of the seven students no I think there is a confusion now once more I'll repeat you know that 10 students scored somewhere between 25 and 30 do you know the mark of one by one do you more know the mark of the students one by one no so what we do is we assume that everyone scored the mid value I know it is wrong I know it is wrong but do you have any better option no so my assumption will be everyone scored a mark of 22.5 I am going to assume that all the 10 students scored a mark of 27.5. Did you understand how I got that 27.5? I am adding and dividing by 2. I am doing 25 plus 30 division to oh, 27.5. Now 32.5, 37.5. 42.5 now I'm going to forget about this so once more take your calculator put it into stat mode turn on frequency and plug in all the values I'm not going to do that I wanted to do it right now and put it in the live chat or the comments below so that's it the next week that means next Tuesday uh, when we meet we will start working with your past paper questions I have collected all the past paper questions as a book you can see that so we will start to work out these questions one by one and if you look at the past paper question past question papers you'll see that they have been asking these question for eight marks now and then they are asking these questions for eight marks so once more in lesson number one we learned about what did we learn 
we learned about the importance of statistics. We talked about data and we talked about how to analyze the data and reduce the data into a few useful numbers called statistical measures. In the second lesson, I told you how to identify the three data types that comes for your exam. Then we talked about something very important, population and sample. This is very, 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 very important. And remember, the data collection method for population is called census. And the data collection method for sample is called, do you know? I think some civil students are watching these videos, survey. And then I showed you the different notations in population and sample for the same measurement. For example, this is arithmetic mean and this is arithmetic mean for sample. And this is the standard deviation and this is the standard deviation for sample. So in your examination, the notation should be uh, correct. And we will wind up this video right now. So make sure you practice a lot with the calculator that you have and please comment the calculator that you are using. You can just comment like Casio FX991EX or the one which you are using so that I will include those calculators in the coming video. So please do support us and I will be back with more videos. We will meet next Tuesday. So till then my friends, bye.